Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue with chapter 9. Chapter 9 is natural convection. We've started looking at the basics, then the equation of motion, natural convection over surfaces. Today we are going to do natural convection from thin surfaces and printed circuit boards. And then, then there will be two more sections, which, which would be on incl inside enclosures and the last one on combined natural and forced convection. Okay, so let's start with paragraph 9.4, natural convection from thin surfaces and printed surface boards. Okay, uh, let's look at a vertical plate which can be used as fins. So vertical plates can be parts of fins and it can be used at fins. And we know in terms of the development of the boundary layer, if the flow occurs through here, then the two boundary layers will start grow and grow and grow until they touch. And from that point onwards, Okay, and from that point onwards, the flow would be fully developed. So if we look at the Nusselt number as a function of, let's call it Z in, in that direction, it's a function of Z, then up to this point there would be, let's call it LT. So if that is equal to LT, then the Nusselt number relationship would be something like that. Okay. So in this part, when the flow is developing, the heat transfer coefficient is at its largest. So, now the electronic industry is a very, very competitive industry at the moment. And heat generation is a big problem. So if you are really pushed and you really want to do a very, very good design, then you need high heat transfer coefficients. So therefore, if you look at this graph, you actually do not want to work in this region. You do not want fully developed flow. Does that make sense? Okay. Fully developed flow gives us a lower retransfer coefficient. So you actually want to work in this region here. And for that reason, many of the electronic components is specifically designed to work in the developing region and not in the fully developed region because we can get the highest heat transfer coefficient. <coughs> now, because also we're working in this region where this boundary layer is not being influenced by the other one, okay, in many cases what we can do is we can consider only that part of the fin and consider it as the flow over a vertical plate. Okay, so we can break this problem up and consider it as one vertical plate. And once we've got the heat transfer from the one plate, we can just double, we can just multiply the answer by two to get the heat transfer coefficient. Although, it's not only by two, in many cases it is by four because the transfer is on all sides of the surfaces. Okay, okay now specifically for front surfaces, a lot of work has been done. And in your textbook, again, you're going to see quite a few equations. And I'm not going to write all of them down now, but we do not have the time for it. But you have to go and work through it and you have to go and read through it very, very carefully, especially the fine print. And I'm going to come back to the fine print a little bit later. Okay, now the first case that they're going to give you is for the case where the surface temperature is a constant. Okay, where the surface temperature is a constant, it's typically being used in heat sinks. What is a heat sink? Well, at the end of the day, I'm sure 
you know what I mean? I'm sure this electronic circuit of mine is not going to work, but that is just schematically. So you know we get all these electronic components, all of them together, but they dissipate a lot of heat. How do we get rid of the heat? Well, usually they are installed on a, on a heat sink. Okay, now the heat sink is usually a metal, in most cases aluminium, with fins. <coughs> there are the fins and all these electronic components are installed on the back of this heat sink. Okay. Here on the board is now a, a much more neater example of the fins. Okay. So that's typically the fins and on the back side of these fins all the electronic components are installed. Okay, now the people that has done a lot of work on on fin surfaces and printed seats, printed circuit boards are Professor Avi Bar Cohen from the University of Maryland and Professor Roshanov at MIT in the 1980s. So a massive amount of information is available a massive amount of information is available and it is published typically in full books. Books thicker than this, this, you can get all the information on it. So in the textbook you only have a few equations that gives you an idea of how to handle these concepts. Now the important thing here is again the characteristic length. Okay, what is the characteristic length? It's in the fine print. Now typically on page uh, 534, on page 534, what it says is before the rally number. It says that there the characteristic length for vertical parallel plates used as fins is usually taken to be the spacing between adjacent fins, S. Okay, so just look at the sketch there, there you can see the S. It is the distance between the fins. Although the fin height L could also be used. Okay, so it says usually it is S, but sometimes L is being used. Okay, so now remember that. So if you've got a red pen or something like that in your and, and you make use of that to identify these important things or a highlighter, I would recommend, for example, that you highlight something like that. It is very important. So the rally number <coughs> is then equal to G multiplied by B, Ts minus T infinite, and the characteristic length now becomes S. <coughs> Divided by mu square multiplied by the Prandtl number. Now to indicate that we use S, to indicate that we use S there, we show the rally number with a footnote S. To indicate it is based on the distance between the fins. Now for this spe special case, when Ts is equal to a constant, then the Nusselt number can be determined by an equation which is equal to the heat transfer coefficient, not multiplied by the diameter or L, but by S. Because that is the characteristic length divided by the thermal conductivity. And the equation that typically describes it is equal to something like this, 576 divided by the rally number based on S multiplied by S divided by L everything to the third plus 2.873 divided by the rally number based on S multiplied by S divided by L everything to the 0.5 and then everything to the minus 0.5 
This is in your textbook equation 9.31. So when we get to electronic components now, or components on which we want to put fins, the question is what should the distance S be between all the fins? Again, a better sketch is there on the board, figure 9.21 in the textbook of Sengel and Gajar. Okay. So the question becomes, So the question becomes, what is the optimum S? If you've got a laptop and you decide you don't want a fan and you want to design a very, very effective heat sink, you can put in lots of fins. You can put them very, very closely packed towards each other. Or you can space them far apart. So the question is, what is the optimum distance between the fins? Okay. Now this work has also been done. And the optimum, and again it is for this special case of a constant wall temperature, or a constant fin temperature in this case, the optimum is equal to 2.714 multiplied by S to the third multiplied by L, divided by rally, based on S, on the spacing between the fins, to the 0.25, or it is equal to 2.714, multiplied by L, but in this case the rally based on the length of the fin L, to the 0.25. And this is equation 932 in your textbook. Okay. So this gives us the optimum distance between fins. And if you use this optimum distance, you can then go and determine the Nusselt number. And the Nusselt number would then be equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the optimum distance divided by K, and that is equal to 1.307. Okay. So if you've got the optimum distance between the fins, then the Nusselt number would be equal to 1.307. But be careful, it is not only the Nusselt number, it is specifically the Nusselt number based on using this characteristic length of the optimum distance, and not the length of the fins. So you have to be very, very careful with these things. Okay, so if we want to calcula calculate now the natural convection, if we want to calculate the natural convection, then that would be equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the area multiplied by Ts minus T infinite. Okay. Now, how do we determine this area? What do we use as the area? Okay. So the area, that would be the height of the fins. Let's say that is equal to the height. Okay. And if I can just maybe sh show one fin so that we can just be clear on the terminology. So as you can see, this is equal to L. That distance is equal to H and the thickness of the fin is equal to T. So the area from which the heat transfer occurs would be equal to 
if we look at this surface area of the fin, it would be equal to L multiplied by H. Okay, you agree? Okay, but it has two sides, so it is two times that, okay, multiplied by the number of fins. Okay, small n is the number of fins. And that would be the heat transfer area on the sides of the fin. Another heat transfer area Another heat transfer area would be through this area here. Okay. So you can also include the tip area. So the tip area is equal to H multiplied by T, if we look at this first one, plus L multiplied by T, plus another H multiplied by T, so it is 2 times HT plus LT. Okay, so that is the area on the tip area. <coughs> okay. In most cases, we would say that that area is negligible. circuit boards typically looks like that they are being packed in racks okay thousands or hundreds of them and in their cases we've got a constant heat flux heat flux is equal to a constant okay. and then it tells you in the text, you have to go and calculate the rally number. Now, not as a function of temperatures, but now you want it as a function of the heat flux. So, with a little bit of manipulation, you can actually go and calculate this Reynolds number. Or this rally number, which is then equal to G multiplied by beta, multiplied by now the heat flux. The heat flux multiplied by S to the fourth divided by K multiplied by the kinematic viscosity multiplied by the Prandtl number. Okay. And for that case there's also an equation for the Nusselt number. I'm not going to write it down now but it is equation 936 in your textbook. And there's also an equation for the optimum spin, spin spacing. And all of that, just go and take a look at it and be very, very careful for the fine print. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, any questions? Okay, let's do an example. Okay. It is based on example 9.3 in your textbook, but it is not that one. It's a little bit different. Okay, now this example is some fins on a base of 150 millimeters. Takes a little bit of time to, to draw it all. 
looks something like that. So 150 millimeters in that direction, the height of the fins is 25 millimeters. And the length is 200 millimeters in that direction. Okay. G is in that direction. Okay, 150 millimeters in the width. Height of 25 and a length of 200 millimeters. Okay. The surfaces is kept constant at a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius and it's a hot day, so the ambient temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, the question is determine the optimum spacing between the fins and B determine the natural convection heat transfer rate. The fin temperature we take as the average between the surface temperature and the ambient temperature which is then equal to 55 degrees Celsius and from table A15 from table A15 we can get all the properties for air. And the properties are the thermal conductivity K is equal to 0 0.02772 watts per meter Kelvin. The kinematic viscosity is equal to 1.847 multiplied by 10 to the minus 5 <coughs> meters square per second. The Prandtl number is equal to 0 0.7215 and beta is equal to 1 divided by the fin temperature is equal to 1 divided by 55. Are you all happy with that? You shouldn't be. Beta, which is 1 divided by the fin temperature, is 1 by, divided by 55. Yes, yeah, a classical mistake. Beta, that temperature should be in Kelvin. <coughs> so it is equal to 1 divided by 328. Okay. Now let's calculate the rally number. Okay, the rally number based on L The rally number based on L is equal to G multiplied by beta multiplied by Ts minus T infinite 
multiplied by L to the third, divided by the kinematic viscosity. Okay, now take note that remember I've told you that for fins usually we use S to calculate the rally number width. Okay. In this case I'm going to, to use L and you're going to see the reason for it just now. Okay, so I'm using L and that is equal then to 9.81 multiplied by beta which is 1 divided by 3 to 8 multiplied by the surface temperature which is 80 minus the environment temperature which is 30 multiplied by the length which is 200 millimeters so it is 0.2 to the third divided by the kinematic viscosity which is equal to 1.847 multiplied by 10 to the minus 5 square and the result is a rally number of 2.405 multiplied by 10 to the 7th. <coughs> okay, so the rally number is 2.405 multiplied by 10 to the 7th. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. Prandtl number. Um, 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 0.7215, yes, thank you. Multiply by the prong. Okay, are you all happy with that? Okay. Now, it has been given that this wall temperature is constant. Okay. In terms of the theory in the textbook, there are two possibilities. Constant wall temperature, constant heat flux. So in this case, you have to go and look at the equations for the constant wall temperature and then you will get equations 932 and 933 which are valid and those <coughs> this part of the work says specifically if Ts is equal to a constant that is equal to a constant, then the optimum distance is equal to 2.714 multiplied by L divided by rally. Rally number based on the characteristic length L to the 0.25. And then the missile number is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the optimum distance divided by the thermal conductivity and that is equal to 1.307. Okay. So this has been determined already and you can use those relationships. So let's calculate this optimum distance because that is what has been asked. So the optimum distance is equal to 2.714 multiplied by L which is equal to 0.2 divided by the rally number which is equal to 2.405 multiplied by 10 to the 7th the square of it, oh, oh point, sorry, oh point 0.2, oh point 0.25, and if we calculate it, it is equal to oh point double oh double seven five one, which is equal to 7.751 millimeters. So that is the optimum distance of the fins. Okay. 
the missile number which is now equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the optimum distance divided by k the Nusselt number is equal to 1.307 if it is the optimum distance and take note it's not a high Nusselt number 1.307 is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by this optimum distance 0.2 007751 divided by the thermal conductivity which is equal to 0 0.02844 from which we can determine the heat transfer coefficient as 4.796 watts per square meter degree Celsius which is what we would expect isn't it because the heat transfer coefficient is relatively low smaller than 10, typically for natural convection. Okay. Now the question now is, we're going to work towards calculating the heat transfer. To calculate the heat transfer, we need to know how many fins there's going to be, because we have to determine the surface area. So if we now look at this, length of 150 millimeters 150 millimeters and if we assume this is the first fin which so by the way and I forgot to mention it that T is equal to one millimeter fin thickness is one millimeter So if this distance of the fin is equal to one millimeter, okay, and then we have to have a gap, this gap is, is, is then equal to 7.751, isn't it? Okay. So this total distance is 150 millimeters. The fin thickness is 1, 7.75 millimeters in between. So how do we determine the number of fins? The number of fins is very easy. It is equal to 150 divided by 1 plus 7.751. And from that we can determine the number of fins is equal to 17.14. Okay. But we cannot have 0.14 of a fin so we have to decide we are going to put in 17 fins okay now many students ladies and gentlemen have a problem when they've got something like this in the test or exam is to ask where does this fin start so once you know there should be 17.14 fins I mean you can make the engineering decision you can decide that maybe I want to stop the first one a little bit in <coughs> because we have to make provision for this 0.14 of a millimeter and from there space all the fins okay so you can decide to do that or you can decide to do what I've done is you just put it <coughs> on the left okay do whatever you want in the test and exam it's not going to matter okay Okay, so now that we know the number of fins, we can calculate the heat transfer rate by natural convection, which is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the surface area multiplied by Ts minus T infinite. Okay, now what is the surface area of all the fins? The surface area surface area is equal to 2 times N multiplied by LH. <coughs> Just look at the sketch and see if you agree. L multiplied by H is the surface area 
Each one of them have both sides of it, and n is the number of them. Okay. And we neglect the area through there. So we only consider all the areas there. Okay. So let's do that as a first calculation, and in the second calculation we are going to take that other area into consideration. Okay, so the surface area is then equal to 2 times n is the number of fins. Okay. Let's calculate the heat transfer rate directly. Heat transfer rate by natural convection is then equal to the heat transfer coefficient, which is 4.796, multiplied by the surface area, which is 2 times 17 fins, multiplied by 0.2, multiplied by 0 0.025, multiplied by 80 minus 30, the temperature difference from which we can calculate <coughs> from which we can calculate the heat transfer rate as 40.77 watts. Okay. Take note of how small the answers are. Okay. So it's not large values. We are not talking of kilowatts. Okay. Usually, typically less than 100 watts. Is this a big issue? Yes, it is quite a big issue in electronics. Okay. What, is the, what is the limitation in technology for our laptops? or for our computers, so that in future it can cost 10 times less. It's the heating. If we can get rid of all the heat. Because for every 10 degrees decrease in the heat, the reliability of all the components uh, decreases with 50%. So it is on its limit. Okay. And it can go faster and it can be made cheaper if we can get rid of all the heat. So that is the problem. It's a big thing at the moment. Okay. So that is now without taking this area into consideration. Let's take the tip areas into consideration. Okay, the tip areas into consideration. Then, the surface area is still the same surface as previously. Okay, the same surface as previously. Which would be the big surfaces. So it's this surface on this side and on its other side. <coughs> now we have to include this area Okay. So that is then equal to N times HT okay. N times HT plus N times LT plus N times HT again. This area, that area and the bottom one. <coughs> we do not take into considera consideration the base area because that is where the heat comes from we are looking at where we are getting rid of all the heat. Okay, now if you go and recalculate that, then the heat transfer rate, heat transfer rate multiplied by using that surface area, multiplied by the temperature difference, would give us a heat transfer rate then of 41.79 watts. We will see that it is a 2.5 percent error. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, any questions? Okay. Okay, thank you. If not,